avoid drug use, which I've said before. I just say that as an incentive, a general thing as well. That thanks, and we've got a few minutes for a few questions. I, I, look, I've probably talked a lot. Hopefully, I haven't sort of you know. And as I said, it, it is a learned process. It's not going to be something that you will do in learn in five minutes, but. I hope you sort of do move towards that way, and 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 I said I'm, I'm sort of really o open to the questions now because I really want to sort of you to ask me, and I'll you know do my best to explain or I will explain it to you. So we've covered a whole lot of territory, but yes, sorry, yep. Yeah, yeah, yes, same, same thing. Hi, Stephen. Thanks for the talk. Um, yeah. Just got a question. Uh, how do you know if you work, say, a specific muscle group, what the maximum weight get, like that you can lift? Yeah. Okay. Remember, if I just go back to the form, okay, now this is where, you know, this is, I suppose, my best way of explaining it. If the form breaks, I've either got too much weight. Also, maybe we'll use time under tension method. We're aiming for a certain time we want to do it. Like, um, we need to get into this a little bit later, but if I'm doing a, a seven second rep, okay, and I want to do um, 10 reps, that I've got to get to like 70 seconds, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> if I can't get that far, because I might be trying to say a bit more endurance or something, I might need to reduce the weight a little bit. But definitely form, and look, sometimes, and I've, I've done this lately because um, just probably re evaluating myself a little bit and re-evaluating the form. For a little while, I'd, I'd reduced the weights a little bit and I went back and really focused on the form to make sure I was doing it correctly, if you know what I mean. Um, so it's a little trial and error, but definitely your form will sort of determine one factor and maybe what your goal is is sort of going to determine the other factors. But as I said, I, and it was really good going back, drop, reducing the weight and just contracting muscles and you know so does that sort of answer the question so and look if you can still handle it go up and wait and probably don't make the jumps too big either yeah, I just want to ask before you had a slide up uh, the 12 minute strength training the five. body by science one yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you elaborate on that a bit yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. glad to someone asked it look <clears throat> again probably it was one of the um, what Doug Doug McGuff's but when they wrote Body by Science. Basically what they've done is they've worked on about two minutes per exercise and per muscle group. So five, two minutes on an exercise, for example, is 10. Then a few seconds or something while you change, you didn't stop between the exercise. Okay, so you went straight from, and they're, they're, it's a whole body workout. Okay, in the one one exercise, but if you look at all the muscles you've targeted, you've targeted every of the major muscle groups in the body through the exercise, like the legs, hips and legs and that. So they're so using leg press or squat. Your back, you've got your arms as well. You know what I mean? Like you form with your biceps and that. Um, yes, sorry. Uh, when you say strength training, you're talking about the one to three rep range or. No, 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 no. Or are you no. just talking about a general circuit? It's like a general circuit. Now, again, though Doug, sorry, used a, 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 he was using a, a super slow method, which is 10 seconds up and 10 seconds down. So you're doing about, if we look at rep range, and that's what I said, a tempo, and I've got to sort of check these a little bit. That's uh, about four or five reps. But each rep's very slow. There's no momentum whatsoever. Honestly, when you do it properly, it is brutally hard. But you won't do it in the sense first up. It's going to take you a little while to get your weights all sorted out, you know what I mean? And know exactly. Look, if you try to do it in a commercial gym, you'll find it hard because you won't be able to get to the next equipment, you know what I mean, piece of equipment. Um, <clears throat> but it's what when we um, recruit muscle fibres, we recruit them in an orderly fashion. You know, in terms, there's sequential. You, you can trial this yourself anyway. It's quite easy. Because when you do the first couple of reps, you might um, recruit a small percentage of what we call slow fatiguing fibres. As you progress through the set, you should start 
asking your muscles to recruit more fibres. As you're getting, you'll feel this deep burning sensation down in your muscles, and as the fibres start to sort of get, um, some fibres will be dropping out, and some fibres will be being picked up. And that's how we sequentially and physiologically recruit or use muscle fibres. So by the time you sort of move to the end of the set, you've worked every fibre. So they've worked from this slow fatiguing, it's in Doug's book, in Body by Science, which is the first the fibres you use. You work your intermediate fatiguing, which is <clears throat> what most of us use anyway. It's in the middle. And then you actually work down towards these fast fatiguing. So the slow fatiguing ones we use quite often. Every day, you're using them now. You just use them, you know what I mean? You just use them. The intermediate ones, you probably use a little bit when we've got to walk upstairs or something like that, you know what I mean? But we've used those really deep fibres those fast fatiguing fibres requires a hell of a lot of effort. And you'll know when you get them. As I say to all my people, you know when you get the fibres because you'll just feel that it's done. It's done. It's all there. If you're not getting them, you're not quite got it right. You know what I mean? So you've done everything as far as the muscle is as recruiting sequential fibres in, in a sequential fashion from smaller to larger. And as it, yeah, it, 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 and as Doug's wrote in his book, people won't believe it, but there's people making some great progress on it too. But he doesn't always he changes his program. Everyone changes. You know, we don't always get it. But you know, just saying. But if you look at what you need to do, basically, bang, that's it. Yep. So does that sort of answer the question? I'll, I'll give you a workout one day. <laughs> it confuse me. Cheers to the speech. It was really good. Very informative. If I wanted to train for speed, yeah, will it still be beneficial, or should I be doing something else? No, 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 no. Just it's the same, same sort of. Is set, it working set, the fast switch muscle fibers? Yeah, or? That, exactly. I said if you work through all the fibers in the, in the same orderly fashion, you'll recruit them. Now, when you talk about speed, and I'll, this is what we talk about in high intensity training sort of world, you're not. Are you talking about your speed for a sport? sport speed, yeah. You practice that sport and you practice it fast. There's no exercise that will help with that, um, your speed of movement. So you practice the skill, and you practice that getting faster. You, you, you practice, do your strength training to get yourself as strong as you possibly can to actually be able to undertake that sport. Yeah. So just practice training fast. Look, you'll find a few variations again, but I hope that answers. Um, do you believe HIT is the best sort of training method for a bodybuilder? The reason I ask is because yeah. I've actually seen and read uh, Doug McGuff's book. Yeah. And he's not really the most biggest guy out, if you yeah. know what I mean. Look, uh, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, 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 no. Because, look, I suppose in a sense, look, I'm not the biggest muscle guy. Well, I'm, I'm nearly 60, you know what I mean? Don't be too many 60 year olds as strong as me. When I go to the gym, I lift twice as much as most 20-year-olds. They, they don't even realise how much I'm lifting until they see what's on the bar. It, we, we sort of talk about genetics a little bit, you know what I mean? Now, if you look at Casey Beata, you know what I mean? There's one of his. Now, Casey, they were doing a bit different in the old days, in the 70s, from the big five. And I will admit, probably the big five won't make you that massive, if you know what I mean. Um, it'll make you strong, but... Um, I don't, you probably, as in when you go into bodybuilding, you're going to have to probably do some specialisation in other muscle groups. Well, that's right, like calves, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you won't get that from a big fight. No, no, no. You'll probably have to do some specialisation. And um, that, so, what, while, while we, he talks about the big five, sorry, is that core sort of group of exercises, and then you can come off that. Look, when I do my program, I do about 10 or 12 exercises, you know what I mean? And I do single joint exercises and things like that. Like, you know, sort of so you isolate certain muscles? Yeah, I isolate yet. certain muscles. Yeah. Okay. But I, I, I don't do it all the time either. But yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, hogging your microphone here. Um, <laughs> uh, how do you grow calves? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> calf raises. <laughs> no. um, I know a guy that's very big, very yeah. short, but yeah. very big. Yeah. And he's grown his chest 
his arms weren't natural. But uh, yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah. <laughs> supposedly, well, he doesn't lose it no, if no, he doesn't no. train. Um, and the one thing he can't grow is his calves. Yeah. Okay, if you there's a couple little different things here. And we go about the genetics now, and there's muscle lengths and muscle bellies we talk about in the high intensity world of lengths. A lot of guys had, if you look at even those guys there, they all had different size calves. You know what I mean? Now, so each one's calf can only, you only can grow at a certain length. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll give you a quick test in one sec to do, but remember I said if I I would look that he's probably went and by the sounds of it done all this and not done the legs. You know what I mean? Big big quads, just the calves. Yeah. Look at the insertion points of the calves and that. You know what I mean? But if you simply want to do a genetic test of what, how big your biceps can grow, we can do it quite easy. If everyone just for one minute or half a second grabs their arm like this, just like that, put it like that, put two fingers in here or put a couple of fingers in here, I guarantee there'll be some people who can get two or three fingers in, and I guarantee there'll be some who can only get one finger in. So your bicep, all those people with different bicep lengths, their bicep will only grow to one side. They'll all just shape differently. Uh, no, well, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> uh, the, the shape will come a little differently in that term. But you can look. It's a simple test, sorry, to see that where the tendon crosses over in the bicep and we'll all have different sort of distances there. So all our muscle belly lengths will be different and they'll all shape differently regardless of what style and type of training we're doing, if you know what I mean, for the bicep. So I'll do my bicep. We, we perfect example. You guys in the gym that do both the same program, look at them, totally different shape because this is a genetic factor that we, we go into. And that's another whole sort of part of it. But some of those guys, even though, and like the guys, the old bodybuilders, the guys there, like Casey and them, other guys won titles and that because they all had different shapes. And one of the things they said in the old days, and sorry, um, Ellington Darden's book, he said if you cut, cut the head off um, all them old guy bodybuilders, you'd know who, uh, who they were. You go and look at the guys these days and you cut their heads off. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. You wouldn't know which one was which. They all look the same. They all had differences about them, you know what I mean? You know, they, all, all the old, they all had a different sort of shape in them. Look at Sergio Olivia, you know, his whole bicep, he couldn't close his arm, he couldn't close his, flex his bicep any further than that. You know what I mean? So, because his biceps went over here. So, you've got all those genetic factors and, and yeah, so it's probably a, a, another story there too. But, um, his carbs, if you look at his carbs, it's probably short. All right. Yeah. Let's okay. give it up, Thank guys. Awesome speech.